Hey there all to new friends, it's JC and I'm excited for today's perfect pairing for two reasons. The first reason is for June 2020, I'm hosting the all to new inspiration challenge with this color palette. I took a photo of my singing bowl and a Palo Santo smudge stick just for this in the hopes of sending you all positive and healing vibes. If you've never heard of the Altenew Inspiration Challenge, the color prompt is provided by the Altenew designers and by sharing your creations on the Altenew blog, you're entered for a chance to win a gift card to the online shop. My video teammate Amber Rain Davis shows her dazzling creations on her own series of videos, so make sure you check out all of her videos on her playlist. I've got the coordinating blog post for June 2020 linked below if you'd like to take a closer look. And the second reason I'm excited for today's perfect pairing is the June 2020 build of flower is my home state flower, the Columbine, well more specifically the Rocky Mountain Columbine, but still. So for this perfect pairing, I'll be using the build of flower Columbine and the color palette I just showed you all for two masculine cards. Yep, masculine floral cards. So let's get started. First up, I've got this Altenew Birchwood Specialty cardstock. It's actual wood veneer that you can stamp on, die cut, and for me, what I'll do first is give it a deep blue stain. I've got an A2 size of the birch wood panel taped to a board with some cheap washi tape, and I'll bring out my Altenew 36 watercolor pan set. In the third row, third from the right, is Desert Night. I'll use that color to make a deep blue wash across this birch wood panel. I really recommend taping this panel down because it has a tendency to curl when wet. Once it dries, I'll remove it from the board and die cut the largest circle from the Altenew Halftone Circles nesting die set. I'll set the circle aside and break out the June 2020 Build a Flower Columbine and another panel of the birch wood. From the Coffee Break Layering Crisp die inks, I'll stamp the second detail layer in sand dunes twice on the panel. I save time from aligning the stamps twice by aligning my cardstock to the top left corner of my MISTI, stamping the image, rotating the cardstock 180 degrees, and then stamping the same image again without removing the stamp from my MISTI. Now when I align the third detail layer of the Columbine, all I have to do is ink up the image with Rocky Shore, stamp, Rotate the panel 180 degrees and align the cardstock to the top left corner. Ink and then stamp again. So those are the Columbine sepals. I'll repeat this color palette on the petals. The second detail layer is stamped in sand dunes, followed by the third detail layer with rocky shore. Notice I omitted the base layers of the build of flower. I did this so the natural color of the birch wood would be the base layer of the flower. I also stamped the stigmas of the flowers with espresso and that finishes the two flowers. With the birch wood papers, depending on the ink pad and direction of the grain, you're not going to get crisp images, which is what I love about stamping on these papers. It looks sort of like pyrography and I love the added element of texture for this masculine card. Okay, so after die cutting the flowers with the coordinating dies, I'll mirror this texture by doing a direct to paper inking technique. I'll rub the Desert Night ink pad from the Cool Summer Night Crisp Dye ink set along the grain and directly onto the watercolored wood veneer for some added depth. For the leaves included with the Build a Flower Columbine, I'll first stamp the second and third detail layers in Espresso Crisp Dye ink. Then I'll mount the solid leaf layer on an acrylic stamping block and stamp half of the leaves with Rocky Shore and the other half with Mocha. After die cutting the leaves with the coordinating die, I'll quickly make a draft arrangement for this masculine card. Typically with my masculine cards, I stick to a geometric formula and it's really easy. I contain all the elements within a shape, so obviously the blue area is the circle. But then I've arranged the flowers and leaves into this triangle. I get this idea from geometric tattoos, which is the inspiration for these masculine themed flower cards. For the background, I'm taking this panel of wood grain white cardstock from Altenew. This is a micro embossed panel of white cardstock to look and feel just like wood grain. I'm doing a quick vignette brown ink blend with mocha, then espresso, 
then finally touches of jet black on the edges. I'll assemble all the elements on this card just like I drafted and add enamel dots from the Cool Summer Night set. That finishes this first masculine card, Sans Sentiment. I like the sentiment to be on the inside for these types of cards. Okay, so with geometric arrangements in mind, let's work on another example. First up are the Columbine flowers. I'll do the same alignment as the first card, but this time my layers are going to be blue. For the second detail layer of the sepals, I'll ink and stamp in Dusk. Then for the third detail layer, I'll stamp and ink in Desert Night. Then for the petals for the second and third layers, I'll stamp them in Sea Glass and Ocean Waves, respectively. Finally, for the stigmas, I'll stamp them in Desert Night. As for the leaves, I'll take the leftover blue birch wood cardstock from the first card and stamp just the second detail layer in Desert Night. Once I have that stamped, I'll die cut all the images using the coordinating die and draft the arrangement again. My goal with this card is to have the flowers be the circle this time. While this isn't obviously a wreath, the curve is continuous and I'm just pointing out the implied circle I'm leaving. For the other geometric element of this card, I'll use a very old favorite of mine, Altenu Sokotoa, to create a linear element on my card. I have no true rhythm to this, I'm adding the equilateral triangles wherever I find the balance between too much and not enough. I don't want too much open space, but I don't want the background to become too muddy either. So I paused here before adding more triangles and rubbed espresso ink into an acrylic block. I added a drop of clean water to create my own coordinating ink splatter for this background. I added more triangles using sand dunes and rocky shore ink pads, and assembled all the flowers and leaves on top. Just to reinforce the resulting geometry of this card, here is my floral semicircle. And then here is the linear arrangement of triangles. Again, no sentiment on this card. So that's it for my perfect pairing with the June 2020 Build a Flower with a little help from the Inspiration Challenge color palette. I used some older specialty papers and a geometric set to help get ready for Father's Day or help give a different perspective on your recipients who may prefer masculine themed cards. If you love this pairing, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. All the Alta new materials are linked in the description box below. And if you've got some ideas of what you'd like to see in this series, please let me know. Thank you so much for tuning into this Perfect Pairings with JC, and I'll see you in the next one. Hello crafters, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching!